Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Termel, and this is the second Obama-Romney debate that I, as the high-tech candidate for Prime Minister of the Planet, President, whatever you want to call it, for a day, all the time I need to reprogram and upgrade the bank's computers to operate interest-free, then I can retire, plan that night's poker game, and I have to make fun of my low-tech competitors for lesser office of the United States presidency. They call it the leadership of the free world, and it's kind of sad to think that the candidates for such an exalted position would be a, a, a lawyer and a silver spooner, you know, a big money baby and a shyster. So this is the best they could come up with in the United States, and of course I am always talking about the Argentine solution paying people with bonds, currencies, interest-free government money like King Henry's tallies with which anybody can pay their taxes so that taxes always equal money and there's always enough money for everybody to pay their taxes and that's how to have a really happy world. But these low-tech klutzes, while well, Dennis Kucinich's bill, 2990, to have the Treasury supplant the Fed and pay people to do reef, um, um, infrastructure repair with new uh, Lincoln greenbacks, now called Kucinich greenbacks. Same idea as the one that saved the Argentine provinces where everybody accepted to be paid in provincial bonds and everybody went back to work. So, these guys are never going to have enough money. They're going to promise you jobs but they never tell you where the paychecks are going to come from. And they're going to lose jobs, and they never tell you how they lost them. What incompetence. Did you lose it yesterday, the day before? You know, how'd you lose it? And they're always looking for new jobs without looking for the paychecks first. So that's my best jokes about them, the fact they'll never find new jobs until they find paychecks, but they'll keep looking all their lives. So debate number two. Okay, we're off with the high-tech commentary on the low-tech leadership hopefuls. The audience here in the hall has agreed to be polite and attentive, no cheering or booing or outbursts of any sort. We will set aside that agreement just I this once to welcome President Barack Obama and Governor Mitt Romney. love to know what they could possibly say. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. I'm gonna get you today. And I want to turn to a first-time voter, uh, Jeremy Epstein, who has a question for you. Mr. President, Governor Romney, as a 20-year-old college student, all I hear from professors, neighbors, and others is that we're going to graduate out of little chance to get employment. Can, what can you say to reassure me, but more importantly, my parents, that I'll be able to sufficiently support myself after I graduate? Thank you, Jeremy. Geez, kid, if you have to use cue cards for 20 words, you know, I'm not going to be too reassuring for you. We appreciate your, your question, and thank you for being here this evening, and to all of those from Nassau County here that have come. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you to Oxford University and to Kenny Crowley for organizing and leading this uh, this event. Thank you, Mr. President, also for being part of this. Of only uh, two this candidates. Event. Your question, your question is one that's being asked by college kids all over the country. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I was in Pennsylvania with someone who just graduated. This was in Philadelphia, and oh, she said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, "I've got my degree. I can't find a job. I've got three part-time jobs. They're just barely enough to pay for my food and pay for an apartment. I can't begin to pay back my student loans." So what we have to do is two things. We have to make sure that we make what? it easier for kids to afford college. We have to. And also make, make sure it that when they get out of college, there's a job. Make sure. When I was governor of Massachusetts to get a high school degree, <laughs> you had to pass an exam. If you graduated in the top quarter of your class, we gave you a John and Abigail Adams scholarship. Four years tuition free to the college of your choice in Massachusetts. It's a public institution. I want to make sure we keep our Pell Grant Wants program, to make sure. program growing. We're also <laughs> going to have our loan program so that people are able to afford school. Oh, but the key thing is to make sure you get a job that you have. That's all it takes, and they can afford school. And what's school. happened over the last four years has been very, very hard for America's young people. Yeah. I want you to be able to get a job. It does. I know what it takes to get this economy going. It does. With half of college kids graduating this year, 
without a college, excuse me, without a job. I know, is that terrible? Job, oh, yeah. That's unacceptable. Yeah, unacceptable. unacceptable. More and more debt in your back. <laughs> so more debt and less jobs. I'm going to change that. I know what it takes to create good jobs wow. again. He knows what, what it takes. takes. to make sure that you have the kind of opportunity. He just to won't tell us. And kids across this country are going to recognize we're bringing back an economy. It's not going to be like the last four years. The middle class has been crushed over the last four years. Oh, yeah, and things are bad. Too scarce. Oh. I know what it takes to bring them back. And I'm going to do that and make sure when you graduate, when you... All right. Jobs have been too scarce. You know, I like making fun of politicians who talk about looking for jobs. You know, and because you can't have a job without a paycheck. So, until you find a source of money for paychecks, you can't have jobs. You can look all you want for jobs, all you want. Hey, there are lots of jobs need be done, just no paychecks. So, he's got ways of coming up with jobs without any new paychecks. Do you believe him? Or is, you know, Silver Spooner pulling our leg? I'm going to do that and make sure when you graduate. When do you graduate? 2014. When you come out in 2014, I presume I'm going to be president. He's going to make, make sure. sure get a job. He'll <laughs> make sure. Uh, he promised everybody he'd make sure. Jeremy, first of all, your future is bright. Oh. The fact that you're making an investment in higher education is critical. Not just to you, but to the entire nation. I need to know how to now, flip a burger, eh? The most important thing we can do is to make sure that we are creating jobs in this country. The most important the thing. Good paying jobs. Good paying ones, not ordinary. ordinary. And what I want to do is... Without paychecks. The five million jobs that we created over the last 30 months in the private sector alone. And there are a bunch of things that we can do to make sure your future is bright. Number one. Aprons for free. Manufacturing jobs in this country again. That's what he wants. Governor Romney said we should let Detroit go bankrupt. I said we're going to bet on American workers and the American auto industry, and it's come surging back. I want to do that in industries, not just uh, in Detroit. He wants so many good things for us. That means we change our tax code, so we're giving incentives to companies that are investing here in the United States and creating jobs here. And that's working. It also means we're helping not. them and small businesses <laughs> to export all around the world in new markets. Oh, yeah. Number two, we got to make sure that... We make have sure. the best education system in the world. The fact that you're going to college ah, the best. is great. He's got to make sure the best. <laughs> you're one of the worst now, but the sure best. That student loans are available for folks like you. Make sure. But I also want to make sure that community colleges are offering yes, slots sir. for workers to get retrained for the jobs that are out there right now. What the else do you want to make sure there? Bro? Number three, we've got to control our own energy. Uh, what we've got to do. Now, not only oil and natural gas, which we've been investing in, but also we've got to make sure we're building the yeah, energy sure, future. Yeah. Not just thinking about next year, but 10 years from now, 20 years from now. That's why we invest in solar and wind and biofuels. Energy efficient cars. We've got to reduce our deficit, but we've got to do it in a balanced way. Asking the wealthy to pay a little bit more along with cuts so that we can invest in yeah, education like yours. And let's take the money that we've been spending on war over the last decade to rebuild America. Roads, bridges, schools. We do those things from the man who promised to end the wars and now has more wars and even more spendings, which is why he can't rebuild America. <laughs> Tell us another one there. Not only is your future going to be bright, but America's future is going to be bright as well. Oh, yeah. Bright boy. Let me ask you for a more uh, immediate answer. Uh, again, Mr. Romley, just quickly, what... Uh, what can you do? We're looking at a situation where 40% of the unemployed have been unemployed for six months. They can ensure things. Has the two years that Jeremy has. What about those long-term unemployed who need a job right now? Yeah. Well, what you're saying in this country is 23 million people struggling to find a job. Things are bad. A lot of them, as you say, Candy, have been out of work for a long, long, long struggling time. Struggling to find a paycheck. The president's policies have been uh, exercised over the last four years. Here, jobs, jobs, and jobs, jobs. Americans back to work. <laughs> we have looking for jobs today that we had when the president took office. If the, un the unemployment rate was 7.8 percent when he took office, it's 7.8 percent now. But if you calculated that unemployment rate, taking back the people who dropped out of the workforce, it would be 10.7 percent. We have not made the progress we need to make to put people back to work. That's why I put out a five-point plan. Oh, it gets America five points. 12 million new jobs <laughs> it's in four years million. and rising take-home pay. It's going to wow. help Jeremy get a job. Specific that he can promises. It's going to help people across the country that are unemployed right now. 
And one thing that the, the president said, which I want to make sure that we understand, he, he said that I said we should take Detroit bankrupt. And, and, and that's right. My plan was to have the company go through bankruptcy like 7-Eleven did at Macy's and, and, uh, uh, and Continental Airlines and come out stronger. And, and I know he keeps saying, you wanted to take Detroit bankrupt. Well, the president took Detroit bankrupt. You took General Motors bankrupt. You took Chrysler bankrupt. A city's so not the you same as a corporation. To take the auto industry bankrupt. You actually did. And, and I think it's important to know that, that that was a process that was necessary to get those companies back on their feet so they could start hiring more people. That was precisely what I recommended and ultimately what happened. Let me, let me give the president a chance. Go ahead. Candy, what Governor Romney said just isn't true. He wanted to take them into bankruptcy without providing them any way to stay open. And we would have lost a million jobs. And that, don't take my word for it. Take the executives at GM and Chrysler, some of whom are Republicans, may even support Governor Romney. But they'll tell you his prescription wasn't going to work. And Governor Romney says he's got a five-point plan. Governor Romney doesn't have a five-point plan. He has a one-point plan. And that plan is to make sure that folks at the top make sure. play by a different set of rules. Oh, that's been his shot. philosophy in the private sector. That's been his philosophy as governor. That's been his philosophy as a presidential candidate. Your philosophy, too. Make a lot of money and pay lower tax rates than somebody Please. who makes a lot less. You can ship jobs overseas and get tax breaks for it. You can invest in a company, bankrupt it, lay off the workers, strip away their pensions, and you still make money. And you would have, too. <laughs> That's you exactly have. the philosophy that we've seen in place for the last decade. That's what's been squeezing middle-class families. No, it's not. And we have fought back for four years to get out of that mess. The last thing we need to do is to and go because back. Because that wasn't the problem. Policy. That's why you failed. Got the, <laughs> the next question is going to be for you here. Mr. Romney, uh, Governor Romney, there'll be plenty of chances here to go on. But that, I want to have all these folks. I will answer, let you ask. That needs an answer, and the rest I, of the answer I, way I, off the mark. Okay. He's got an answer about how to come up with jobs with our paychecks. I got because I want to move you on to Aww. something that sort of connected to cars here and, and go over, and we want to get a question from Phil Tricola. Oh, he's got a read hit too, you know. Fuck. Your energy secretary, Stephen Chu, has now been on record three times stating it's not policy of his department to help lower gas prices. Do you agree with Secretary Chu that this is not the job of the energy department? The most important thing we can do is to make sure we control our own energy. What's important? So here's right? what I've done since I've been president. What's important? We have increased oil production to the highest levels in 16 years. Yeah, from 15 to 15 and a half percent. In decades. We have seen increases in coal production and coal employment. But what I've also said is we can't just produce traditional sources of energy. We've also got to look to the future. That's why we well, double we also the fuel efficiency of do. Our cars. That means we that also in need. the next decade, any car you buy, you're going to end up going twice as far on a gallon of gas. Oh, yeah. That's why we've doubled clean, clean energy production, like clean and solar and biofuels. Yeah, sure, yeah. And all these things have contributed to us lowering our oil imports to the lowest levels in 16 years. Now, I want to build on that. And that means, yes, we still continue to open up new areas for drilling. We continue to make uh, it a priority for us to go after natural gas. We've got potentially... 600,000 jobs and 100 years worth of energy right beneath our feet with natural gas. And we can do it in an environmentally sound way. But we've also got to continue to figure out how we have efficient energy because ultimately that's how... We have to continue to figure out. Now, isn't it sad? At no point is he talking about conserving wisely and not wasting energy, but always finding more we're going to reduce demand, and that's what's going to keep gas prices lower. Now, so we can buy more. Romney will say he's got an all-of-the-above plan, but basically his plan is to let the oil companies write the energy policies. So Whatever he's got that means. the oil and gas part, but he doesn't have the clean energy part. And if we are only thinking about tomorrow or the next day and not thinking about 10 years from now, we're not going to control our own economic future. Because China 
Germany, they're making these investments. And I'm not going to cede those jobs of the future to those countries. I expect those new energy sources to be built right here in the United States. That's going to help Germany get a job. It's also going to make sure uh, that you're not paying as much for gas. So, so that's going to help Jeremy get a job. Without ever mentioning where any new paychecks are going to come from, he managed to figure out, he gave an answer of how Jeremy's going to end up with a job without a paycheck. Ha, ha, ha. Well, let's look at the president's policies, all right, as opposed to the rhetoric. Ah. Because we've had four years of policies being played out. And the president's right in terms of the additional oil production, but none of it came on federal land. As a matter of fact, oil production is down 14% this year on federal land, and gas production is down 9%. Why? Because the president... See, you never know what a guy's stats mean, eh? Then the other guy comes with his set of stats. On federal lands and in federal waters. Dueling so stats. So where did the increase come from? Well, a lot of it came from the Bakken Range in North Dakota. What was his participation there? The administration brought a criminal action against the people drilling up there for oil, this massive new resource we have. Uh, and, and what was the cause? Uh, 20 or 25 birds were killed and they brought out a migratory... Guard environmentalists. On a criminal basis. Look, I want to make sure we use our oil, our coal, our gas, our nuclear, our renewables. I believe... Nuclear, our renewable dumb. Ethanol, wind, solar will be an important part of our energy mix. But what we don't need is to have the president keeping us from taking advantage of oil, coal, and gas. This has not been Mr. Oil or Mr. Gas or Mr. Coal. Talk to the people that are working in those industries. I was in coal country. People grab my arms and say, please, oh, please save my please job. Save my job. The head of the EPA save said, my you can't build a coal plant. You know, virtually, it's virtually impossible given our regulations. When the president ran for office, he said, if you build a coal plant, you can go ahead, but you'll go bankrupt. That's not the right course for America. Let's take advantage of the energy resources we have, as well as the energy sources for the future. And if we do that, if we do what I'm planning on doing, which is getting us energy independent, for North America energy independence, within eight years, <laughs> <you're gonna laughs> manufacturing jobs come back, because our energy is low cost. God, They're already promise anything, eh? Because of our abundant energy. I'll get America and North America energy independent. I'll do it by more drilling, more permits and licenses. We're going to bring that pipeline in from Canada. How in the world the president said no to that pipeline, I will never know. This is about bringing good jobs back for the middle class of America. And that's what I'm going to do. Mr. President, let me... Good jobs with a pipeline. The, the, the gist of this question. We'll pay you with oil. Are we looking at the new normal? I can tell you that tomorrow morning a lot of people in Hampton will wake up and fill up and they will find that the price of gas is over $4 a gallon. Is it within the purview of the government to bring those prices down, or are we looking at the new normal? Candy, there's no doubt that world demand's gone up, but our production is going up, and we're using oil more efficiently. And very little of what Governor Romney just said is true. <laughs> We've opened up... Dueling liars. We're actually drilling more on public lands than in the previous administration. Oh. And my, the previous president was an oil man. And that was much. And natural gas isn't just appearing magically, we're encouraging it. I'm working with the Encouraging. And when wow, I have wow. around me say he's a big coal <laughs> guy. Encouraging. And keep in mind when Governor when you were governor of Massachusetts, you stood in front of a coal plant and pointed at it and said, This plant kills and took great pride in shutting it down. And now suddenly you're a big champion of coal. <laughs> so Good what shot. I try to do is be consistent. With respect to something like coal, consistently wrong investment in clean coal technology to make sure that not even enough we're investment. More coal, we're producing it cleaner and smarter. Same thing with oil. Make sure. Same thing with natural gas. Yeah, and sure. the proof is our oil imports are down to the lowest levels in 20 years. Oil production is up. Natural gas production is up. And most importantly, we're also starting to build cars that are more efficient, and that's creating jobs. That means those cars can be more much, the demand around the world, and it also means that it'll save money in your pocketbook. That's the strategy you need, an all the above strategy, and that's what we're going to do in the next four years. Uh, he's got a strategy. But that's not what you've done in the last four years. <laughs> in the last four years, you cut permits and licenses on federal land and federal waters in half. Not true, Governor Robert. So how much did you cut? Not true. By how much did you cut by that? 
Governor, we have actually produced more oil. No, no. How much did you cut licenses and permits on federal land and federal waters? Governor Romney, here's what we did. There were a whole bunch of oil companies. No, I, I, you know, I, had a, I had a question, and the question was, how much did you cut the money? More oil, but less licenses. I'm happy to answer the question. All right, and it is. Here's what happened. You had a whole bunch of oil companies who had leases on public lands that they weren't using. So what we said was, you can't just sit on this for 10, 20, 30 years, decide when you want to drill, when you want to produce, when it's most profitable for you. These are public lands. So if you want to drill on public lands, you use it or you lose it. Okay, that and is... so what we did was take away those leases, and we are now reletting them, so that we can and, actually make a profit. And production on, private, on government and land is, is down. No, it production on government land of oil is down 14%. Government. And production on gas is down 9%. It's just I, not true. It's absolutely true. Look, there's no question but that the people recognize that we have not produced more oil and time. gas yes. on federal lands and in federal waters. And coal... Coal production is not up. Coal jobs are not up. I was just at a coal facility coal where jobs. 1,200 people lost their jobs. The right course for America is where they go. All of the above policy. I don't think anyone really believes that you're a person who's going to be pushing for oil and gas and coal. You'll get your chance in a moment. I'm still speaking. Well, and the no, answer is I don't believe people think that's the case because I, I'm, that wasn't a question. Okay. That was a statement. I don't think the American people believe that. I will fight for oil, coal, and natural gas. And the proof, fight for. the proof of whether a strategy is working or not is what the price is that you're paying at the pump. Aww. If you're paying less than you paid a year or two ago, well, then the strategy is working. But you're paying more. When the president took office, the price of gasoline here in Nassau County was about about 86 a gallon. Now it's 4 bucks a gallon. Price of electricity is up. If the president's energy policies are working, you're going to see the cost of energy come down. I will fight to create more they energy in this country to create energy secure. <laughs> and part of that is bringing in a pipeline of oil from Canada, taking advantage of the oil and coal we have here. The karate kid will Alaska, fight for I'm sure in Virginia where the Virginia. people want it. Those things will get us the energy we need. Mr. President, could you address Fighting the for the will get it. gas prices here? Could you address um, what the governor said, which is, if your energy policy was working, the price know. of gasoline would not be $4 a gallon. <laughs> well, think, about, what the governor, think about what the governor just said. He said, when I took office, the price of gasoline was 180 186 Why is that? Because the economy was on the verge of collapse. Because we were about to go through the worst recession since the Great Depression. As a consequence of some of the same policies the governor Romney is now promoting. So, it's conceivable that Governor Romney could bring down gas prices because with his policies, we might be back in that same mess. What I want to do is to create an economy that is strong. That's what he wants to do. And at the same time, produce energy. And yes. With respect to this pipeline that Governor Romney keeps on talking about. Wants to do two things, same time. We build enough pipeline to wrap around the entire earth once. So, I'm all for pipelines, I'm all for oil production. What I'm not for is us ignoring the other half of the equation. So, for example, on wind energy, when Governor Romney says these are imaginary jobs, when you've got thousands of people right now in Iowa, right now in Colorado, who are working, creating wind power with good-paying manufacturing jobs, and the Republican senator that's in Iowa is all for it, providing tax credits to help this uh, work, and Governor Romney says, I'm opposed. I'd get rid of it. That's not an energy strategy for the future. And we need to win that future. And I intend to win it as President of the United States. I got I got to move you on. Well, and the, the first, next question is for got, you. He actually got the first question, it, so I get the last question. It, the last answer. I actually, in the follow-up, it doesn't quite work like that. I'm going to give you a, a chance here. I promise you I'm going to. And the next question is for you. So if you want to... You know, continue on. I wonder what the rule is. All these Candy, guys sitting here. Candy, I don't have a policy of, of stopping wind jobs in Iowa, and they're, they're not uh, phantom jobs. They're real jobs. Okay. I appreciate wind jobs in Iowa and across our country. I appreciate the jobs in wind coal paychecks. And oil. I and appreciate. Gas. I'm going to make sure okay. that taking Thank advantage you. of our energy resources will bring back manufacturing to America. We're going to get through a, a very aggressive energy policy. Three and a half million more jobs. Oh. This is critical to our future. Maybe it's we're going to move you both along to yeah. taxes over here and all well, these things. Well, this should be fun. Governor, this question is for you. It comes from Mary Colonna.
Olano, sorry. Um, Governor Romney, um, you have stated that if you're elected president, uh, you would plan to reduce the tax rates for all the tax brackets, and that you would work with the Congress to eliminate some deductions in order to make up for the loss in revenue. Um, concerning the, these various deductions, the mortgage deduction, the uh, charitable deductions, the child tax credit, and also the, um, oh, what's that other credit? <laughs> 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 she was the best so far, though, right? Didn't need cue cards. The education credits, which are important to me because I have children in college. I had the four things I'll labeled. Your position on those things, which are important to the middle class. Thank you very much. Good for her. Good yeah, question. Say, you're absolutely right about part of that, which is I want to bring the rates down. Oh, yeah. I want to simplify the That's what he wants. He uh, wants great like stuff, doesn't he? Taxpayers to have lower taxes. He wants lower taxes. And, and the reason I want middle income Obama taxpayers too? to have lower taxes oh. is because middle income taxpayers have been buried. Why he wants us to have less taxes? You've seen as middle what income a wonderful people, man. incomes go down four thousand three hundred dollars a family. Oh yeah, things are bad. Gasoline prices have gone up. Oh, that's why he wants taxes to go Health down. He feels up for $2, us. Two thousand five hundred dollars. Food prices up. Utility prices up. The middle-income families in America have been crushed over the last... I know, with his hundreds of millions, he knows how they family. feel. That's part, that's part one. Now, how about deductions? Because I'm going to bring rates down across the board for everybody. He's going to bring the I'm rates down, yeah. Deductions and exemptions and credits, particularly for people at the oh. high end. Because I am not going to have people at the high end pay less than they're paying what now. What he's not going to do... The top 5% of the taxpayers will continue to pay 60% of the income tax. The nation collects. So that'll stay the same. Middle income people are going to get a tax break. And so, in terms the of poor people, are going to get screwed. Screwed. Right? Say everybody gets, I'll pick like a number, $25,000 Who's deduction. left? Credits. And you can decide which ones to use your home mortgage interest deduction, charity, child tax credit, and so forth. You could use those as part of filling that bucket, if you will, the deduction. But your rate comes down, and the burden also comes down on you for one more reason. And that is every middle income taxpayer no longer will pay any tax on interest, dividends, or capital gains. All right. So nothing changes for the rich and things get better for the middle class. Now he's going to tell us what happens to the poor under his plan? <laughs> there we no look. tax on your savings. For the middle class it's voters. A lot easier. Not the poor guys who don't if vote. If you're getting interest from a bank, if you're getting... Uh, a Interest from a bank, unearned income. Kind of investments you have, you don't have to worry about filing taxes on that. Oh, no, taxes no taxes on unearned income. Two hundred thousand dollars a year and less on your interest, dividends, and capital gains. Why am I lowering taxes on the middle class? Because under the last two hundred G's a year capital gains for doing nothing. The middle class. Middle class. I, will not, I will not, under any circumstances, reduce the share that's being paid by the highest income taxpayers. And I will not, under any circumstances, well, he won't do it. We won't increase do. taxes in the middle class. The president's spending. Which will you do? Stick it to the will poor. The first nation to have to raise taxes on the American people. Not just at the high end. A recent study has shown the people in the middle class will see $4,000 a year oh. in taxes as a result of the spending and borrowing of oh. this administration. And the poor people I will, will lose $4,000 each. I'll get us on track to a balanced budget. And I'm going to reduce oh. the tax burden on middle income families. What's that going to do? It's going to help. What's that going to do? Well, first of all, let me tell you the problem with a balanced budget. Everybody, governments, borrow from the banks. Principal, P. And then they spend it. Now, in their budget, they have to include getting the interest back for the bank, not just the principal. So, Governments always try and suck out more money in taxes than they put in, in money spent. Always. And that's why government is always draining the people dry, and why it can never work if they're indebted to banks for their chips. So now let's go back to Silver Spooner, see what he wants to do. Those families, and it's going to create incentives to start... Growing jobs again this country. Growing jobs like plants. You don't need paychecks, they just sprout. <laughs>
growing jobs. First time I ever heard that. That's a good one, really. Yeah. A little bit of water, a little bit of fertilizer. Got a lot of that, eh? <laughs> growing jobs. That's, <laughs> that's rich. My philosophy on taxes has been... Oh, what he believes. And that is, I want to give middle class... Oh, what he wants. And folks who are striving to get into the middle oh, class yes. some relief. Yes. Because they have help us, help us. Over the last decade. He wants to help us. Over the last us. 15, over the last 20 years. Things have been bad. So four years ago, I stood on the stage just like this one. Actually, it was in town hall. And I made a lot of provinces. For middle class families. And that's what I've done. Oh, yeah. At $3,600. I said I cut taxes. And stuck it to the poor. small businesses. For the drivers and engines of growth. And we've cut them 18 times. Certainly not the poor so people, like drivers and engines of growth. Those tax cuts for middle class families and for small businesses. But what I've also said is, if we're serious about reducing the deficit, if this is genuinely a moral obligation to the next generation, <laughs> and in addition to some tough spending cuts, we've also got to make sure that the wealthy do a little bit more. So, he's not going to actually cut the interest from the budget. He's just going to find a way of spreading it around to a little more to the rich, right? But he's always going to be draining more than he put in. He can't get away from that function doing it his way. <laughs> so what I said is, your first $250,000 worth of income? Quarter million! No change. No change that for the rich. percent oh, of American rich. families, 97% of small businesses, they will not see a tax increase. I'm ready to sign that bill right oh, now. Oh, take it to the happen. bank like four because years ago. Governor Romney's allies are not rich have held the 98% hostage because they want tax breaks for the top 2%. You know, I thought the most devastating attack commercial would be that quote about, I'll get them out of those wars, you can take that to the bank, and then just have a series of guffaws, a laughter track laughing at him. You can take that to the bank. Here he is offering again. But what I've also said is, for above 250000 we can go back to the tax rates we had when Bill Clinton was president. We created 23 million new jobs. That's part of what took us from deficits to surplus. It will be good for our economy. Taxing the rich a little bit more will create 23 million new jobs. What do you think? <laughs> All right. And it will be good for job creation. Now, Governor Romney has a different philosophy. He was on 60 Minutes just two weeks ago. And he was asked, is it fair for somebody like you making $20 million a year to pay a lower tax rate than a nurse or a bus driver, somebody making $50,000 a year? And he said, yes, I think that's fair. I mean, he said, I think that's what grows the economy. Well, I fundamentally disagree with that. I think what grows the economy is when you get that tax credit that we put in place for your kids going to college. <laughs> I think that grows the economy. I think what grows the economy... Grows the economy. Small yes. businesses are getting a tax Water. for hiring veterans. No money. But... For our country. That grows our economy. So we just have a different theory. And when Governor Romney stands here, after a year of campaign, when during a Republican primary, he stood on stage and said, I'm going to get tax cuts. He didn't say tax rate cuts. He said tax cuts to everybody, including the top 1%. You should believe him, because that's been his history. And that's exactly the kind of top-down economics that is not going to work if we want a strong middle class and an economy that's thriving for everyone. Well, he knows what won't work. Senator Romney, I'm sure you better reply there. You're absolutely right. You heard what I said about my tax plan. It's <laughs> the top 5% will continue to pay 60% as they do today. I'm not looking to cut taxes for wealthy people. I am looking to cut taxes for middle-income people. And stick it to the poor! That <laughs> keeps forgetting the to mention time, that. Lower exemptions and deductions Who else is going to pay? Because if you bring rates down, it makes it easier for small business to keep more of their capital and hire people. And for me, this is about jobs. Oh, I want to get America's economy going again. 54% yeah, yeah. of America's workers Things work are bad. in businesses that are taxed as individuals. So when you bring those rates down, those small businesses are able to keep more money and hire more people. For me, I look at what's happened in the last four years and say, this has been a disappointment. We can do better than this. 
We don't have to settle for how many months? 43 months with unemployment about 8%. 23 million Americans struggling to find a good job right now. There are three and a half million more women to find a good living paycheck. in poverty today than when the president took office. We don't have to live like this. We can get this economy going again. My five-point plan does it. And oh, gonna... come on. We don't have to. We can do better. I have a plan. <laughs> Jeez. I mean, you'd think this should be on the comedy channel, right? And it's for North America in five years. Five years plan of independence. In Latin America, cracking down on China when they cheat, getting us to a balanced budget, fixing our training programs for our workers, and finally championing small business. Well, what else is there left to fix once Mitt's fixed everything? <laughs> I want to help small businesses. Grow and oh, survive. he does want to help. I know how to make that happen. He knows. I spent my life in the private sector. I know why jobs come and why they go. And they're going now because of the policies of this administration. Governor, let me... He knows why jobs come and go. That's why he's looking for them over here, over there, everywhere. <laughs> Ask the president something about what you just said. Uh, the, the governor says that he is not going to allow... Uh, the top 5% oh. to have a tax cut, that it will all even out, that what he wants to do is give it yeah, Even out, yes. To the middle class. Top 5 keep theirs, so middle class gets so savings, so so poor class. Look, oh, they didn't mention right. poor class, the right? of lowering rates for everybody across the board, 20%, along with what he also wants to do in terms of eliminating the estate tax, along with what he wants to do in terms of corporates, uh, changes in the tax code, it costs about $5 trillion. All right. Governor Romney then also wants to spend $2 trillion on additional military programs, even though the military is not asking for them. That's $7 trillion. He also wants to continue the Bush tax Big hole. Americans. That's another trillion dollars. That's $8 trillion. Big hole. Now, what he says is he's going to make sure that this doesn't add to the deficit, and he's going to cut middle class taxes. But when he's asked, how are you going to do it? Which deductions? Which loopholes are you going to I have a five point plan. <laughs> the fact that he only has to pay 14% on his taxes when a lot of you are paying much higher. Oh, good shot. You know, he's already taken that off the board. Capital gains are going to good continue shot. to be yes. at a low rate. Long shark and tax free. We haven't with heard from the governor. Any specifics beyond Big Bird and eliminating funding for Planned Parenthood in terms of how he pays for that. Now, Governor Romney <laughs> is a very successful investor. It's Hard to believe, eh? With a successful plan investor. Here, I want Jesus to spend Christ. seven or eight. What kind of lunatics they got in finance? We're going to pay for it, but we can't tell you until maybe after the election how we're going to do right, it. That's right, seven, eight trillion. You wouldn't have taken such a sketchy deal. And neither should you, the American people. Good shots. Because the math doesn't add up. That's right. And, and <laughs> what's at stake here is one of two things. Either candy, this blows up the deficit. Because keep in mind, this is just to pay for the additional spending that he's talking about. Seven, eight trillion dollars. That's before we even get to the deficit we already have. Or alternatively, it's got to be paid for not only by closing deductions for wealthy individuals, that, that'll pay for about 4% reduction in tax rates. Oh, big four. You're going to be paying for it. You're going to lose some deduction. And you can't buy this sales pitch. Nobody who's looked at it that's serious actually believes it adds up. Mr. President, let me get let me get the governor in on this. And governor, let's before we get into a, a vast array of uh, who says what, what study says what, if it shouldn't add up, if somehow when you get in there, there isn't enough tax revenue coming in, what if will somehow you do? the numbers don't add up, would you be willing to look again at a 20%? Well, I, of course they add up. <laughs> I, I, I was I I added added them up. ran businesses for 25 years and yeah. balanced the budget. I ran the Olympics and balanced the budget. I ran the, the uh, state of Massachusetts as a governor, to the extent any governor does, and balanced the budget all four years. When we're talking about math that doesn't add up, how about $4 trillion of deficits over the last four years? $5 trillion. That's math that doesn't add up. We have, we, 
we have a president talking about someone's plan uh, in, in a way that's completely foreign to what my real plan is. And then we have his own record, which is we have four consecutive years. I know, they're both bums, aren't they? Office, he would cut the deficit in half. Sure, Obama's a bum, but it doesn't mean he wouldn't be a worse bum. And Obama's only argument is you'd be a worse bum. You'd lose more than me. If we were reelected, we'd go to almost $20 trillion of national debt. This puts us on a road to Greece. I know what it takes to balance budgets. I've done it my entire life. So, for instance, when he says, yours is the $5 trillion cut, well, no, it's not, because I'm offsetting some of the reductions, withholding down some of the deductions. And, no, the governor, and, and I got it, I got it, actually, I, I need to have trillion you Five trillion words? I understand what the states here, I understand both of you, but I, I will get run out of town. And I just described, I just described to you, Mr. President, president I, just I just described to you precisely how I do it. How is he going to do it? A single number that people can put, and they can put their, 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 uh, their deductions and credits into that budget. Mr. President, that you're, we'll um, keep in track, I okay. promise you. And Mr. President, the next question is for us. It's funny, you got it with me, eh? It's Catherine Fenton. Uh, you know, posterity will be watching this someday and realize that these are like baboons. In what new ways do you intend to rectify inequalities in the workplace, specifically regarding females making only 72% of what their male counterparts earn? Well, Kevin, this is a great question. Oh, and, great question. You know, I was raised by a single mom. Oh, what he believes. Who had to put herself through school while looking after two kids. Single moms are good. And... She worked hard every day and made a lot of sacrifices yeah. to make sure we got... He understands single moms. Yeah, yeah. My grandmother. Oh. She started off uh, as a secretary in a bank. She never got uh, college education, even though she was smart as a whip. And she worked her way up to become a vice president of a local bank. But she had to foreclosures. She trained people <laughs> to foreclose. who ended up becoming her bosses during the course of her career. She didn't complain. That's not what you did in that generation. And this is one of the reasons why one of the first, the first bill I signed was something called the Louie Ledbetter Bill. Oh. And this is named after this amazing woman who had been doing the same job as a man for years, found out that she was getting paid less, and the Supreme Court said that she couldn't bring suit because she should have found out about it earlier, when she had no way of finding out about it. So we fixed that. And that's an example of the kind of advocacy that we need because women are increasingly the breadwinners in the family. This is not just women a women's issue. This is a family issue. This is a middle class issue. And that's why we've got to fight for it. Fight. It also means that we've got to make sure that make sure. young people like yourself are able to afford a college education. To Earlier, afford, Dr. yes. Talked about, he wants to yeah, make sure them. you can afford it. Uh, other education Make is, sure. uh, accessible for young people. Accessible. So yeah, is, affordable that's education. Exactly accessible what we education. Yeah. Programs for millions of people, including wheelchair ramps everywhere. everywhere. All across the country. We did it by taking $60 billion that was going to banks and lenders as middlemen for the student loan program, and we said, let's just cut out the middlemen. Let's get the money directly to students. And as a consequence, we've seen millions of young people be able to afford college. And that's going to make sure that young women are going to be able to compete well, in that Afford student loans. Well, we've got to loss, <laughs> they still can't afford college. And we've also got to make sure that <laughs> in every law of life, we do not tolerate discrimination. That's been one of the hallmarks of my administration. I'm going to continue to push on this issue uh, for the next four years. Oh, uh, Rob, Senator Rob. Romney, pay equity for women. Thank you. And, uh, well, he's in favor of it, I'm sure. And one which I learned a great deal about. Uh, particularly as I was serving as governor of my state, because I had the, the chance to pull together a cabinet, and uh, all the applicants seemed to be men. And I, and I went to my staff and they said, how come all the people for these jobs are, are all men? They said, well, these are the people that have the qualifications. And I said, well, gosh, can't we, can't we find some, some women that are also qualified? And, uh, and so we, we took a concerted effort to go out and find women who had backgrounds that could be qualified to become members of our cabinet. I went to a number of women's groups and said, can you help us find folks? And I brought us whole binders full of uh, uh, women. I was proud of the fact that after I staffed my cabinet and my senior staff, that the University of New York uh, in Albany did a survey of all 50 states and concluded that mine had more women in senior leadership positions than any other state in America. 
Now, one of the reasons I was able to get so many good women to be part of that team was because of our recruiting effort, but number two, because I recognized that if you're going to have women in the workforce, that sometimes they need to be more flexible. My chief of staff, for instance, I had two kids that were still in school. She said, I can't be here until 7 or 8 o'clock like at night. I, I need to be able to get home at 5 o'clock so I can be there for making dinner for my kids and being with them when they get home from school. So he said, fine. So they set up a daycare. schedule so you can have hours that work for you. We're going to have oh. to have employers in the new economy. Well, we're going to have to have. In the economy I'm going to bring yeah. to play that are going to be so anxious to get good workers that they're going to be gonna. anxious to hire women. In the, in the last uh, four years, women have lost 580,000 jobs. That's the net of what's happened in the last four years. We're still down 580,000 jobs. I mentioned three and a half million women, more now in poverty than four years ago. And if we could only find those jobs, jobs again. Women and women of all ages. Where to lose them? Where to lose them? So strong that employers are looking to find good employees and bringing them into their workforce and uh, adapting to a, fle uh, a flexible work schedule that gives women the opportunities that, that they would otherwise not be able to, to afford. This is what I've done, it's what I look forward to doing, and I know what it takes to make an economy work. Oh. And I know what a working economy looks like. An economy with 7.8% unemployment is not a real strong economy. Big money economy boy knows what it takes. That, that has 23 million people looking for work is not a strong economy. Yeah, stick economy it to the poor. 50% yes, of kids graduating <laughs> from college, they can't find a job. Or a college level oh, job. How That's horrible. what we have to have. They can't find a paycheck. Women in America get work. Wow, they're looking for jobs. A stronger economy and by supporting women in the workforce. Mr. President, why don't you get in on this? Uh, he supports women in the economy. Before Governor Romney's campaign was asked about the women no. that are built, <laughs> very important, he said, I'll get back to you. And that's not the kind of advocacy that women need uh, in any economy. He knows what it's like. Now, there's some other issues that have a bearing on how women succeed in the workplace. For example, their health care. Now, a major difference in this campaign is that Governor Romney feels comfortable having politicians in Washington decide the health care choices that women are making. I think that's a mistake. In my health care bill, I said insurance companies need to provide contraceptive coverage to everybody who's insured. Because this is not just a health issue, it's an economic issue for women. It makes a difference. This is money out of that family's pocket. Governor Romney not only opposed it, he suggested that, in fact, employers should be able to make the decision as to whether or not a woman gets uh, contraception through her insurance coverage. That's not the kind of advocacy that women need. When Governor Romney says that we should eliminate funding for Planned Parenthood, there are millions of women all across the country who rely on Planned Parenthood for not just contraceptive care, they rely on it for mammograms, for cervical cancer screenings. That's a pocketbook issue for women and families all across the country. And it makes a difference in terms of how well and effectively women are able to work. When we talk about child care and the credits that we're providing, that makes a difference in terms of whether they can go out there and earn a living for their family. These are not just women's issues. These are family issues. These are economic issues. And one of the things that makes us grow as an economy is when everybody participates and women are getting the same fair deal so Romney wants to grow jobs and he wants to grow the economy. They have the same opportunities that anybody's sons have. That's part of what I'm fighting for as President of the United States. I want to move us along fighting here, Susan for. Katz. Uh, so he's fighting for that vision, you. that aim, that goal, that what we need. Governor Romney? She's reading too. I'm an undecided voter because I'm disappointed with the lack of progress I've seen in the last four years. However, I do attribute much of America's economic and international problems to the failings and missteps of the Bush administration. Since both you and President Bush are Republicans, I fear a return to the policies of those years should you win this election. What is the biggest difference between you and George W. Bush, and how do you differentiate yourself 
from George W. Bush. How about differentiating from Thank Obama? You. I appreciate that question. <laughs> I, I just want to make sure that I think I was supposed to get that last answer, but I want to point out that oh. I, I don't believe. Oh, that's okay. I, I don't uh, believe. I want to make sure our, our timekeepers are working. Okay. The, the, the timekeepers time are all working, and let me tell you that the last part, there's, it's, it's the, for the two of you to talk to one another, and this is quite as orders as you think. But go ahead and use just two minutes any way you'd like to. The, the question is on the floor. I, I just note that uh, I don't believe that bureaucrats in Washington should tell someone whether they can use contraceptives or not. And I don't believe employers should tell someone whether they could have contraceptive care or not. When he doesn't Everyone believe. In America should have twice. access to contraceptives. And, and, the, and the president's uh, statement of my policy is completely and totally wrong. Governor Let me come back and, and, and answer your question. The, President Bush and I are, are different people. And these are different times. And that's why I find <laughs> Same policies. Different than what he would have done. Different because times. We can now, by virtue of new technology, actually get all the energy we need oh. in North America without having to go to the, the Arabs or the Venezuelans or anyone else. That wasn't oh. true at this time. That's why my policy starts with a very robust policy to get all that energy in North America. It becomes it's kind of a robust security. policy. Number two, That'll trade. Work. I'll crack down on China. Oh. I'm, pushed it. I'm also going to dramatically expand trade in Latin America. It's been growing about... Crack down on his creditor. <laughs> more China. Free trade agreements so we have more trade. Number three, I'm going to get us to a balanced budget. Oh. President Bush didn't. President Obama was right. He said that that was outrageous to have deficits as high as half a trillion dollars under the Bush years. He was right. But then he put in place deficits twice that size. And so everyone, you're going to do twice that size. That's, that's how exponentials work. It's more deficits, <laughs> almost that large. So that's the next area I'm different than President Bush. Oh. And then let's take the last one, championing small business. Four times as large Our as Bush has been deficit. focused on big business too long. I came through small business. I understand how hard it is to start a small oh, business. He came from That's small why everything business. I'll do is designed to help small, small loan shark company and add jobs. I want to keep their taxes down. Oh, he wants to. He does. I want regulators to see their job as encouraging small enterprises. Oh, that's what he wants. Yes, he and wants thing good I find things. Most troubling about Obamacare. Well, it's a long list, but one of the things I find most troubling is that when you go out and talk to small Trouble. businesses and ask them what they think about it, they tell you it keeps them from hiring more people. Oh. My priority is jobs. I know how to make that happen. And Without President Bush has a very different path. He knows how to make it happen, different. believe him. My path is designed <laughs> in getting small businesses to grow and hire people. So his path is designed to get small businesses to grow and hire people. So as soon as they grow, they can hire people. And to hire people, you need more money, and that means growing means they get more money. And all they got to do is get more money by growing, and they can hire more people. And he always leaves money out of the equation. Isn't it funny? So he wants to grow more jobs while Obama wants to grow more economy. Well, funny use of the word growing. Well, I think it's important to tell you that we did come in during some tough times. We were losing 800,000 jobs a month when I started. Aren't they cool? We had been digging our way out of policies <laughs> that were misplaced and focused on the top doing very well and middle class folks not doing well. Now we've seen 30 consecutive, 31 consecutive months of job growth. 5.2 million new jobs created. And the plans that I talked about will create even more. Will you have well, fries with that hamburger, sir? <laughs> the centerpiece of his economic plan are tax cuts. That's what took us from surplus to deficit. When he talks about getting tough on China... I know, that's you know, funny. Keep in mind that Governor Romney invested in companies that were pioneers of outsourcing to China. Oh. And is currently investing in countries, uh, in, in companies that are building surveillance equipment for China to spy on its own folks. Oh, That's, ouch. Governor, you're the last person who's going to get tough on China. <laughs> what he's done when it comes to trade is Ooh, not good shot. three trade deals to open up new markets, but we've also set up a task force for trade that goes after anybody who is oh. taking advantage of American workers. You're going to go to court for us. We've brought twice oh. as many cases against 
Unfair trade practices in the previous administration. Instead of six, we get 12. <laughs> and I said, probably two to four. We had to make sure that China was not flooding our domestic market. Make sure. Buyers. Governor Romney said I was being protectionist, that it wouldn't be helpful to American workers. Well, in fact, we saved a thousand jobs. And that's the kind of tough trade actions that are required. But the last point I want to make is this. Saved the jobs. There are some things where Governor Romney is different from George Bush. And George Bush didn't propose turning Medicare into a voucher. George Bush embraced comprehensive immigration reform. He didn't call for self-deportation. George Bush never suggested that we eliminate funding for Planned Parenthood. So there are differences between Governor Romney and... George Bush, but they're not on economic policy. In some ways, he's gone to a more extreme plate for our economy forward. I want to move you both along to the next question because it's in the same wheelhouse, so you, you will uh, be able to respond, but uh, the president does get this question. I want to call on Michael Jones. Mr. President, I voted for you in 2008. What have you done or accomplished to earn my vote in 2012? I'm not that optimistic as I was in 2012. Most things I need for everyday living are very expensive. Well, we've gone Where will I get more years. money? There's no doubt about it. But four years ago, I told the American people and I told you I would cut taxes for middle class families. Oh. And I did. Oh. I told you I'd cut taxes. Yeah, but he said he was poor. And I had. I said that I'd end the war in Iraq, and I did. I said we'd refocus attention oh, end the on war the war in Iraq. Us on 9/11. <laughs> Delusion. We've gone after Al Qaeda's leadership like never before, yeah. and Osama bin Laden is dead. Yeah. I said that we would put in place. I saw the proof. I saw a pair of boots floating in the ocean. Osama bin Laden is dead. <laughs> Who believes that? He's a turkey. Healthcare reform to make sure that insurance companies can't do it. He's probably insurance. living in Miami <laughs> in retirement, you know, CIA safe house. I, had. I committed that I would rein in the excesses of Wall Street and we passed the toughest Wall Street reforms since the 1930s. We created 5 million jobs. Oh, Wall Street reform. Jobs Tough Monday stuff. And we, <laughs> and we saved an auto industry that was on the brink of collapse. Now, does that mean you're not struggling? Absolutely not. A lot of us are. Oh, we are. And that's why the plan yeah. that I put forward for manufacturing. And oh, we has a plan and put reducing forward. And reducing in a sensible way. Sensible. Using the savings from ending wars oh, to rebuild America. Ending he wars, he's got three new ones. <laughs> making sure that we are controlling our own energy, but not just the energy making of the future, sure. the energy of the future. All those things will make a difference. So the point is, the commitments I've made... I've kept. And those that I haven't been able to keep, it's not for lack of... They were, we're big whoppers, them. all right. <laughs> you should pay attention... No to more torture. <laughs> Guantanamo Obama. And I suspect he'll keep those, too. Now, when Barack Obama... Say we're going to sign a no tax pledge so that we don't ask a dime for millions and millions to reduce our deficit so we can still invest in education. And helping kids go to college. Oh. He said, me too. When they said, we're going to cut Planned Parenthood funding. He said, me too. When he said, we're going to repeal Obamacare. First thing I'm going to do, despite the fact that it's the same health care plan that he passed in Massachusetts and is working well. He said, me too. Same and insurance plan. It's not the leadership that you need, but you should expect that those are promises he's going to keep. Mr. And the choice of this let... election is going to be whose promises are going to be more likely to help you in your life, make sure your kids can go to college, make sure that you are getting a good paying job, making sure... Oh, yes, making, making sure. sure. Thank you. Governor. He's an expert at making sure. I think you know better. I, I think you know that these last four years haven't been so good as the president just described, and that you don't feel like you're confident that the next four years are going to be much better either. I can tell you that if you were to elect President Obama, you know what you're going to get. You're going to get a repeat of the last four years. We just can't afford four more years like the last four years. Why would you be different? He said that by now we have unemployment at 
<laughs> you made promises too. Nine point four percent is nine million Americans uh, without work. Wow. I, I wasn't the one that said five point four percent. I know he's a bum. This was the president's plan. Nick, Didn't four years, you'd be the bum. He said he would have by now put forward a plan to reform Medicare and Social Security. Well, you said you would. Because he put it out there on the road to bankruptcy. He would reform them. He'd get that done. He hasn't even made a proposal on either one. He said in his first year he put on an immigration plan. He's a bum. It would deal with her immigration challenges. Didn't even file it. I know. This is a president who has not been able to do what he said he did. Yeah, he's a bum. He said that he cut in half the deficit. Yeah, he's no good. He hasn't done that either. Yeah, I know. In fact, he doubled it. I know. He said that by now... He's such a bum, they should vote for Romney is what he's saying. health insurance premiums by $2,500 a year. It's gone up by $2,500 a year. And if Obamacare is passed or implemented, it's already been passed, if it's implemented fully, it'll be another $2,500 on top. The middle class is getting crushed under the policies of a president who has not understood what it takes to get the economy working again. He keeps saying, look, I've created 5 million jobs. That's after losing 5 million jobs. The entire record is such that the unemployment has not been reduced in this country. The unemployment, the number of people who are still looking for work, is still 23 million Americans. There are more people in poverty, one out of six people in poverty. How about food stamps? When he took office, 32 million I people know, are he food wants to change that. Today, 47 million <laughs> people are in food stamps. Obama wanted to, fail. He wants to, hasn't more failed yet. This year Vote for him, he ain't failed yet. <laughs> and more slowly last year than the year before. The, the president wants to do well, I understand. But the policies he's put in place, from Obamacare to Dodd-Frank, to his tax policies, to his regulatory policies, these policies combined have not let this economy take off and grow like it could have. Oh. You might say, well, you got an example of when it worked better? Yeah. In the Reagan recession, where unemployment hit 10.8%, between that period, the end of that recession, and the equivalent period of time to today, Ronald Reagan's re recovery created twice as many jobs as this president's recovery. Five million jobs doesn't even keep up with our population growth. And the only reason the unemployment rate seems a little lower today is because of all the people that have dropped out of the workforce. The president has tried. And isn't it funny that in Argentina, by the unions and people accepting to be paid in government small denomination interest-free paper, everybody who wanted to do something useful for their community could be paid by the government to do it. And isn't it funny that the exact same idea, government paper to pay people for infrastructure repair, has been promoted by Dennis Kucinich in the United States uh, Congress, Bill 2990, to have the Treasury take over the Fed, and the Fed, but with an alternative, and pay people with Treasury notes like Lincoln Greenback did. So, same idea. Government interest-free paper works great to create jobs, create paychecks for jobs. And how come the Argentine population and people and unions and politicians and me and Dennis Kucinich get that, but these halfwits do not? But his policies... Demwits! He's great as a... As a, a, a as no a bright light for and, sure. And describing his plans and his vision, that's wonderful, except we have a record to look at. And that record shows <laughs> you don't. he hasn't been able to cut the deficit. He can make any promise he wants, no one isn't a lie yet. To preserve them, to get us the rising incomes we need. Oh, to Me get it for us. $4,300 a family. Things are bad with him. 23 million Americans out of work. That's what this election is about. It's about who can get the middle class in this country a bright and prosperous oh, future my. and assure our kids the kind of hope and optimism they deserve. Governor, I want to move you along. Don't, don't go away. And uh, we'll thank work. God history gets the watch this, you know. Of the clock for both of you, but I want to bring in a, a different... In an era when money's going to be fixed, this will be right completely different. Uh, uh, Lorraine Osorio has a question to you about... The I presume an audience who are hip to, to what we're right talking about here. Thanks. Hey, 
What do you plan on doing with immigrants without their green card that are currently living here as productive members of society? Thank you. Good rain. Did I get that right? Good. Oh. Thank you for your question. And let me step back and tell you what I'd like to do with our immigration what policy broadly like to include do. an answer to your, your question. First of all, this is a nation of immigrants. We welcome people coming to this country as immigrants. My but only so many American of certain colors. And dad was born in Wales and is a first generation American. We welcome legal immigrants into this legal, country. Legal, that's I right. I want our legal system to work better. I want it to be streamlined. He wants I want legal it to be system. Clearer. I don't think you have to, shouldn't have to hire a lawyer to figure out how to get into this country legally. I also think that we should give visas to people, green cards rather, to people who graduate with skills that we need. People around the world with accredited degrees in, in science and math get a green card stapled to their diploma, come to the U.S. of A. We should make sure that our legal system works. Number two, make sure. we're going to have to stop illegal immigration. Oh. There are four million people who are waiting for to get here legally. <laughs> those who come here illegally take their place. They're going to start so wanting to leave pretty soon, you know. Gulag America is pretty bad. Place an employment verification system and make sure that employers that hire people who have come here illegally are sanctioned for doing so. Aren't people going I back to Mexico? Place, um, magnets for people coming here illegally. So, for instance, I would not give driver's licenses oh, to those who come here do. illegally as a, as a president would. Uh, the kids oh. of, of those that came here illegally, those kids, I think, should have a pathway to become a, oh. a permanent resident of the United States. And military service, for instance, a pathway to become, but not a pathway to become a permanent resident. Born here, but not a citizen. Mr. Kid, to follow his pathway. He said that he put in place in his first year a piece of legislation. He filed a bill in his first year that would reform our, our immigration. Oh, did he system, fail? Protect legal immigration, stop illegal immigration. He didn't do it. He failed. He had a Democrat House, a Democrat Senate, supermajority in both houses. And he failed. So why did he fail? How could he fail? But even promote legislation. That would have provided an answer I for those know. that want to come here illegally. Such a bum, and for eh? those that are here illegally today. That's a question I think. So many broken promises Mitch would play right with, eh? He looks forward to it. Uh, Lorena? Lorraine, uh, we are a nation of immigrants. Oh, yes, he really says that. Just a few miles away from Ellis Island. We all understand what this country has become because talent from all around the world. Wants to come here. People who are willing to take risks. There's food. People who want to build on their dreams and make sure their kids have even bigger dreams. No, than no, no. There's food. But we're also a nation of walls. <laughs> so what I've said is we need to fix we the broken to, yeah. immigration system. And I've done everything that I can on my own. And failed. And sought cooperation from Congress to make sure that we fix the system. But failed. First thing we did was to streamline the legal immigration system. And it's still a failure. Make it easier, simpler, and cheaper for, for people who are... That's what he wanted to do. Obeying the law to make sure that they can come here and contribute to our country. Didn't and that's work. good for our economic growth. They'll start new businesses. They'll make things happen to create jobs here in the United States. Number two, oh, we do have to deal with our border. So we put more border patrol on than any time in history. Texas. And the flow of yeah. undocumented workers across the border is actually lower than it's been in 40 years. What I've also said is... I know they're going back the other way, that's my point. After, folks who are here illegally, we should do it smartly. A lot of fences to keep the Yankees in. Gangbangers, people who are hurting the community. Not after students. Not after folks who are here just because they're trying to figure out how to feed their families. And that's what we've done. And what I've also said is, for young people who come here, brought here oftentimes by their parents, have gone to school here to pledge allegiance to the flag. Think of this as their country. Understand themselves as Americans. In every way except having papers. And we should make sure that we give them a pathway to citizenship. Make sure a pathway. And oh, it was the same thing. Now, okay. Governor Romney just said that... But not citizenship. He wants to a help pathway. people too. But during the Republican primary, he said, I will veto the DREAM Act that would allow these young people to have access. His main strategy during the Republican primary was to say, we're going to encourage self-deportation. Making life so miserable on folks that they'll leave. Self-deportation. the Arizona law a model <laughs> for the like nation. Bad, Part of the man. Arizona law said that law enforcement officers could stop folks because they suspected maybe they looked like they might be undocumented workers. Yeah. And 
check their papers. You know what? Papers, please. My daughter or yours looks to somebody like they're not a citizen. I don't want. I don't want to empower somebody like that. Yeah, but some guys so are good guessers. We can fix this system in a comprehensive way. And when Governor Romney says the we can, is well, well, yes, we can. <laughs> Famous <laughs> line, right? Yes, we can. No, I we sat couldn't. down with Democrats and Republicans <laughs> at the beginning of my term. And I said, let's fix this system, including senators previously who supported another Republican. Yes, government. we can. But it's very hard for Republicans in Congress oh, no, to we couldn't. comprehensive immigration reform. If their standard bearer has said that this is not something I'm interested in supporting. Let me get the governor in here, Mr. President. Um, let, let's speak to, if you could, Governor, uh, the idea of self-deportation. No, let, let, let me go back and speak to the points that the president made, and, and, uh, and let's get them correct. I did not say that the Arizona law was a model for the nation in that aspect. I said that the E-Verify portion of the Arizona law, which is, which is the portion of the law which says that employers could be able to determine whether someone is here illegally or not illegally, that that was a model for the nation. That's number one. Number two, all right. I asked the president a question I think Hispanics and immigrants all over the nation have asked. He was asked this on Univision the other day. Why, when you said you'd file legislation in your first year, didn't you do it? And he doesn't answer it. He, don't, he doesn't answer that question. He said the standard bearer wasn't for it. I, I'm glad you thought it was <laughs> Another broken Thomas, Barry! Four years ago, you said in your first year you would file legislation. In his first year, I, I was just getting, I was looking at my wounds from having been beaten by John McCain. All right, I was not the standard bearer. My, my view is that this president should have honored his promise to, to do as he said. Now, let me mention one other thing, and that is. Self-deportation says let, it, let people make their own choice. What I was saying is, we're not going to round up 12 million people undocumented. Sure you will. And take Jobs! Instead, let me, people make their own choice. And if they, to make if their they own choice. It, if they, they find it so... They can't get the benefits, can't, 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 can't drive, can't, drive, can't, can't buy food, food they maybe they'll go away. But I'm not in favor of rounding up people. In, 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 no, in just make it so country. bad to live the leave. Okay, absolutely. Nice. I agree with him, which is that if people committed crimes, we got to get them out of this country. All right, criminals will get out of the country, but other people will just make it so bad they want to leave. Uh, what he was describing. Uh, the kids, you know, the innocents. So hold on a second. Mr. President, I'm still speaking. I'm sorry. Mr. President, let me finish. I, 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 I'm, I'm going to continue. I'm going to continue. Can you make it short? See all these people? They've been waiting no. for you. Could you just make, make a point. Any investments I have over the last eight years have been managed by a blind trust. And I understand they do include investments outside the United States, including in, in Chinese companies. Mr. President, have you looked at your pension? Have you looked at your pension? I've got to say. Hey, Mr. Pe President, have you looked at your pension? You know, you, I, I don't look at my pension. It's not as big as yours, so it doesn't well, take let me, let me give you some. Let, yeah. me give, let me give you some advice. I'll check it that often. Let me give you some advice. <laughs> Look at your pension. You also have investments in Chinese companies. Yeah. You also have investments outside the United States. Yeah. You also have investments through a Keynes right. Trust. We're a little off topic. Yeah. 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 I know we're talking about immigration. I came back to where you want to make sure that... I'd like to have you sit down, Governor Romney. Thank you. I do want to make sure that we just understand something. Governor Romney says he wasn't referring to Arizona as a model for the nation. His top advisor on immigration is the guy who designed the Arizona law, the entirety of it. Not he fair or fine, the whole thing. That's his policy. And it's a bad policy. And it won't help us grow. Look, when we think about immigration, we have to understand there are folks all around the world who still see America as the land of promise. <laughs> and they provide us energy and they Lot provide less us than he thinks. And they start companies like Intel and Google, and we want to encourage that. Now, we've got to make sure Has been. that we do it in a smart way, in a comprehensive way, and we make the legal system... Oh, no, no, sorry, not Intel, Google. Sorry. But when we make this into a divisive political issue, and when we don't have bipartisan support, I can deliver, Governor, a whole bunch of Democrats to get comprehensive immigration reform done, and I'll we get it can... Done. We, can't, the first year. We, can't, we have not seen Mr. Republicans let me move you serious here, about please. this issue at all. Mr. And it's President. time for them to get serious on it. This used to be a bipartisan issue. Right. Don't go away because I, 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 I want you to talk to Carrie Lodka, who has a, wants to switch a topic for us. Okay. I care.
going to read it? Of course he's going to read it. It's Carrie. Carrie Latke. Yeah. This question actually comes from a, um, a brain trust of my friends at Global Telecom Supply in Mineola yesterday. We were sitting around talking about Libya, and we were reading and became aware of reports that the State Department refused extra security for our embassy in Benghazi, Libya, wow. prior to the attacks that killed four Americans. Who was it that denied enhanced security? Hillary. Well, let me first of all talk about our diplomats, because they serve all around oh, the world. Oh, they must be protected. And They're nice people. Motherhood, apple pie, dangerous. Yes. These aren't just representatives of the United I States. I know, They're representatives. Yes. I send them there. Oftentimes they must protect them, yes. I know these folks, and I know their families. You so should. nobody's more concerned about their safety and security than I am. Now answer the question. So as soon as we found out that the Benghazi consulate was being overrun, I was on the phone with my... pulled off security. Team, and I gave them three instructions. Number one, beef up our security no, and safety. No, before. Uh, Why'd you pull it off is the question. Not just in Not Libya, after. Every embassy and consulate in the region. Number two, investigate exactly what happened. Yeah, who pulled it off? Yeah, the facts that's the question. Needed. Did you get an answer? Make sure that <laughs> folks are not found and it doesn't happen again. Did you get an answer? And number three, we are going to find out who did this and we're uh, going to hunt them. Yes, not. Because one of the things that I've said throughout my presidency is... We're not interested in hunting America. down who did it. We're interested in finding out who called off security, now, right? Now, Governor Romney had a very different response. While we were still dealing with our diplomats being threatened, <laughs> I knew about Romney put out a press release trying to make political points. Oh, Lord. And that's not how a commander in chief operates. I know. He's not going to tell he us who called off his security. <laughs> Certainly not right when it's happening. Ash. And people, not everybody agrees with some of the decisions I've made. Like calling off his security. When it comes to our national security, oh, I mean what I said. You called it off? I said I'd end the war in, Libya, uh, in, in Iraq, and I did. No, no, in Libya, Libya, go back to Libya. I said that we go after Al-Qaeda and Bin Laden, we have. No, 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 go back to Libya, who called off security? Out of Afghanistan, and start making sure that Afghans are responsible for their own security. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, but back to Libya, who and called off security? When I say that we are going to find out exactly what happened. Who called off security? Everybody will be held accountable. Yeah, we want to know. And I am ultimately responsible for what's taking place there. You call off security. My folks. And I'm the one who has to greet those coffins when they come home. So you call off security. You know that I mean what I say. Well, tell us, did you call off security? You didn't tell Thank us you, you called off security. Question. It's well, watch, this is going to be a deep dive. I, I think the president just said correctly that the buck does stop at his desk, and, and he takes responsibility for, for that, uh, for the the failure in providing those security resources and, uh -huh. and those terrible things may, may well happen from time to time. It's not failure to provide, it's calling off. Sympathetic for the families of those who lost, lost loved ones. Today there's a... It's like when they called off JFK's security, you know? We, we different than failure to provide. Deeply. Uh, there were other issues associated with this, uh, with this tragedy. Um, Dance and dance and dance, dance away. <laughs> this was a spontaneous demonstration or actually whether it was a terrorist attack. And there was no demonstration involved. It was a terrorist attack. Um, and it took a long time. Yeah, the resistance. The, the Libyan Green resistance uh, attack. Whether there was some misleading or instead whether we just didn't know what so happened. So they made it sound like angry like video time. viewers. Five days later, <laughs> uh, when the ambassador to the United Nations went on TV to say that this was a demonstration, how could we have not known? But, but I find more troubling than this, that on, on the day following... Who called off security? Of the United States Before, America, not United after. States happened, since 1979, <laughs> when, uh, when we had four Americans killed there. Who called off America, security? But the president, the day after that happened, flies to Las Vegas for political fundraising. Oh, fun the times. next day to Colorado for another event. Oh, another God. Another political event. What a waste uh, of these, time when it... These actions off. taken by a president and leader... <laughs> Have some Jesus, moral significance off tangent. and perhaps even uh, material significance in that you'd hope that during that time we could call in the people who were actually eyewitnesses. We've read their accounts now about what happened. It was very clear this was not a demonstration. And we still this don't know who called off the security for the ambassador. And, and this calls into question the president's whole policy in the Middle East. Oh, it was Look policy. In Syria, in Egypt, now in, in Libya. 
consider the distance between ourselves and Israel. The president said that he was going to put daylight between us and Israel. We have Iran four years closer to a nuclear bomb. Syria. Syria is not just the tragedy of 30,000 civilians. This man's delusional, really. But also a strategic, a strategically significant player for America. The president's policies throughout the Middle East began with an apology tour and pursue a strategy of leading from behind. And this strategy is unraveling before our very eyes. Because we're, we're closing in, I want to still get a lot of people in. I want All right. So basically, Obama promised us to get out of the wars, give us peace, and he gave us more wars. And with Obama, I, oh, I'm Romney, well, he's just promising more wars. He ain't even going to lie and promise peace. I'm going to ask you something. Honest man, he wants war. Uh, your Secretary of State, as I'm sure you know, has said uh, that she takes full responsibility for the attack on the diplomatic mission in Benghazi. Does the buck stop with your Secretary of State for a call? Take full responsibility f for the attack. Jeez, you mean Hillary organized the attack on her own ambassador? I just thought she called off his security. God, did she actually say that Hillary took responsibility for the attack? Or did she take responsibility for calling off the security? We should listen to that again. Oh, of course, Candy put it, she took responsibility for the attack. You know, like, didn't do her job well enough. Not calling off security. <laughs> nice cover up, Candy. Secretary Clinton has done an extraordinary job. Oh, yes. But she works for me. I'm the president. And I'm always responsible. And that's why nobody's more interested... He in called off security for the ambassador. I told you. He's the, the one. after the attack, Governor... No, no, before, before. in the Rose Garden. We, before. That's what we're told interested. told the American people in the world that we were going to find out exactly what happened. Yeah, but you just said you called off security. An and I also said... And we're going to hunt down those who committed this crime. Yeah, but you called off security. You must have known and who was going to do it. A few days later, I was there greeting the caskets coming into Andrews Air Force Base. And I think you called off his and security. And grieving the families. Oh, grieving, man. And the suggestion... Shouldn't have called off security. ...that anybody in my team, <laughs> or the Secretary of State, are you an ambassador? Might have what? Called off security? Anybody on my team would play politics or mislead when we've lost four of our own governor, is offensive. So we're just that's not going to answer who called off security. We won't mislead. That that's would not be what offensive. I do as president. That's not what I do as commander in chief. <laughs> so he's not going to tell that's you who called off security. I, 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 I think it's interesting the president just said something, which, which is that on the day after the attack, he went to the Rose Garden and said that this was an act of terror. And the question before was, what did you do the day before? You said in the Rose Garden, the day after the attack, it was an act of terror. It was not a Please spontaneous proceed. demonstration. Is that what you're saying? Please proceed, Governor. I, I, I want to make sure we get that for the record, because it took the President 14 days before he called the attack in Benghazi an act of terror. Get the transfer. He didn't, didn't want to admit the Green Resistance had done it. He did call it an act of terror. It did as well take, it did as well uh, take uh, two weeks or so uh, for the whole idea of there being a riot out there about this tape uh, to come out. You're correct the, this, about that. The administration, the administration indicated that this was a, a reaction to a, to a video yeah. and it was a spontaneous reaction. It, it took them a long time to say this was a terrorist act by a terrorist group. Yeah, by the resistance. The suggestion, <laughs> terrorist the resistance. Regard, you bombed uh, first. The, uh, the, your, your secretary. Your legitimate the Libyan Green the, uh, Resistance. Uh, Got him. One of the Sunday te television shows and, and spoke about how yeah, this yeah. was a spontaneous I'm reaction. Happy, I'm happy to have a longer conversation about it. Absolutely. But I want, I want to move you on and also. Okay. Okay. Neither answered the question of who called off the security of the ambassador just before the attack. Who set him up? Me, eh? The way they danced around it and ducked it. But you remember, that was the question who called off security? You stated you wanted to keep AK. 47s out of the hands of criminals. What has your administration done 
or plan to do to limit the availability of assault weapons. And we're a nation that believes in the Second Amendment. Well, what we believe in. I believe in the Second Amendment. You know, we've got a long Got the right to keep bazookas. And sports. RPGs. And tanks. And people who want to make sure they can protect themselves. Protect ourselves. Tanks. But <laughs> there have been too many instances during the course of my presidency where I've had to comfort families who've lost somebody, most recently out in Aurora. Now, just uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago, actually probably about a month, uh, I saw oh, a mother. Anecdotal story. Oh. I met at the bedside of her son who had been shot in that theater. And her son had been shot through the head. And we spent some time and we said a prayer. What a nice man. And remarkably, about two months later, Does he say a prayer where people he drones? <laughs> showed up and he looked unbelievable. Good as new. But there were a lot of families who didn't have that good fortune. Yeah, drone and master victims. Sons or daughters or husbands didn't survive. Yeah, I can think of so lots of that. My belief is that a, we have to enforce the laws we've already got. I wish we could get you Make in front sure of the judge. Make sure we're keeping guns out of the hands of criminals. Like those you. Who are and drones. Ill. And drones. We've done a much better job in terms of background checks. Keeping drones out of the hands of criminals, eh? When it comes to enforcement. <laughs> but I also share your belief that weapons that were designed for soldiers in war theaters don't belong on our streets. And so what I'm trying to do is to get a broader conversation about how do we reduce the violence generally. Part of it is seeing if we can get an assault weapons ban reintroduced, but part of it is also looking at other sources of the violence. Because frankly, in my hometown of Chicago, there's an awful lot of violence, and they're not using AK-47s, they're using cheap handguns. And so what can we do to intervene to make sure that young people have the questions. What can that we our do? schools are working. What can we do? That if there's violence on the streets, that working with faith groups and law enforcement we can catch it before it gets out of control. Oh, we can. So what I want is a, yes, we is can. a no, comprehensive we strategy. Part of it is seeing if we can get automatic uh, weapons that kill folks comprehensive. In, in amazing numbers out of the hands of criminals and uh, the mentally ill. But part of it is also going deeper and seeing if we can get into these communities and making sure we catch violent impulses before they Making happen. sure to catch the violent impulses before they happen. Yeah, I, I'm not in favor of new pieces of legislation. Cop on every corner. And, and taking guns away. Watch them in case you look bad. Illegal. We, of course, don't want to have they automatic weapons. They so shot him. It's illegal in this country to have <laughs> automatic <laughs> weapons. What, what I believe is we have to do, as the what president mentioned uh, towards the end of his remarks there, which is to make enormous efforts to enforce the gun laws that we have and to change the culture of violence we have. And yes, change the culture that. of violence. And there are a number of things. He mentioned good schools. I totally agree. We were able to drive our good schools. Good schools will do that. You know, yeah, I just state. need good I schools. If we do a better job in education, we'll, yeah, we'll give better education the help. Yeah, opportunity yeah. they deserve and perhaps less violence from that. But Opportunities would help, yeah. And that is parents. We need moms and dads helping raise kids. Oh, yeah. Wherever possible to yeah. get the benefit. Be nice if moms and dads have time to raise possible. their kids. A lot of great single moms, single dads. Jeez. But gosh, to tell our kids that before they I have know, babies, if they only had more they money, they could go stay home with the kids. That's a great huh? idea. Because if there's a two parent family, the prospect of living in poverty goes down dramatically. The opportunities that the child will, will be able to achieve increase dramatically. So Such an unfair we can game the out there. Our, yes. our culture works to help bring people away from violence and give them opportunity. And Make bring changes the to system. bring people the, away The greatest from failure violence. we've had with regards to, to gun <laughs> violence in some respects is what, what is known as Fast and Furious, which was a program uh, <laughs> under this administration. And how it worked exactly, I think we don't know precisely. But where thousands of automatic and, and AK-47 type weapons were were given to people that ultimately gave them to, to drug lords. They used those weapons against uh, against their own citizens and killed Americans with them. And this was a this was a program of the government. For what purpose it was put in place, I can't imagine. But it's one of the great tragedies related to violence in our society, which has occurred during this administration, which I think the American people would like to understand fully. It's been investigated to a degree, but 
but the administration has, uh, has, a, has carried out executive privilege to, to prevent all the information from coming out. I'd like to understand who it was that did this, what the idea was behind it, why it led to the violence, thousands of guns going to Mexican yeah. drug dealers. Governor, if I could, the Compared to the 400 million guns in the country, he's worried about the few thousand that moved around banned. across the border. Uh, I, I know that you signed a, a assault weapons ban when you were in Massachusetts. Obviously, with this question, you, you no longer do support that. I mean, why worry about why hundreds of billions of guns when you can worry about a few thousand, right? Uh, why is it that you've changed your mind? Well, Kenny, actually, in, in my state, the pro-gun folks and the anti-gun folks came together and put together a piece of legislation. And it's referred to as a as the an assault weapon ban, but it had at the signing of the bill, both the pro-gun and the anti-gun people came together because it provided opportunities for both that both wanted. There were hunting opportunities, for instance, that hadn't previously been available and so forth. So it was a mutually agreed with assault rifles. More <laughs> what we have right now in Washington is a place that's uh, that's critical. Got my rabbit. We have, <laughs> we have, <laughs> nothing we left. Have, we, haven't yes. had the, we haven't had the leadership in Washington to work on a bipartisan basis. I was able to do that in my state and bring these two together. But, uh, Mr. President. The, uh, uh, first of all, I think Governor Romney was for an assault weapons ban before he was against it. And he said that the reason he changed his mind was in part because he was seeking the endorsement of the National Rifle Association. <laughs> so that's on the record. But I think that one area we agree on is... Which way does care. the wind blow? I mean, Romney, <laughs> eh? Because I do believe that if our young people... What he believes. ...have opportunity... Oh, opportunities. And they're less likely to engage in these kind of violent acts. Oh, they, nice. If they had opportunities. Is mentally disturbed, and we've got to make sure that they don't get weapons. But Just got to make sure. In terms of ensuring that every sure. young person in America, regardless of where they come from, what they look like, uh, have a chance to succeed. Ensure chances, yes. We haven't yes. had a chance to talk about education much, but I think it is very important to understand. That's important. The reforms we put in place, working with... 46 governors around the country are seeing schools that are some of the ones that are the toughest for kids starting to succeed. We're starting to see gains in math and science. Starting? Wow. Community colleges. What does that mean? We are setting up uh, programs, including with Nassau Community College, to retrain workers, including young people who may have dropped out of school, but now are getting... For no paychecks. <laughs> the jobs that exist right now. And in fact, employers are looking... Take somebody to else's jobs right now. <laughs> so we're matching them up. No new jobs. Giving them access to higher education. As I said, we have made sure that millions of young people made sure. are able to get education that they weren't able to get before. Now, Mr. President, guys, I, have but, to, I have to move you along here. But, you but, said you wanted to do this. It'll, 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 just one second. One because, because this is important. This is part of the choice in this election. And when Governor Parami was asked whether... Teachers, hiring more teachers was important to growing our economy. Growing our economy. Governor Romney said that doesn't grow our economy. He wants to grow jobs. Mr. President, we're done here, so I, I need to move us on to the question of guns. So let me, let but me this will make bring a difference in, another... in terms of whether or not we can move this economy forward for these young people. I understand. And reduce our violence. Okay, thank you so much. I, I want to ask Carol Goldberg to stand up because she gets to a question that both these women have been passionate about. It's for Governor Romney. The outsourcing of American jobs overseas has taken a toll on our economy. What plans do you have to the jobs have been lost. keep jobs here in the United States? Boy, great question. An important question because oh, keep jobs here. Right. At the place where we've seen it's grow some. China. <laughs> China is now the largest manufacturer in the world. It used to be the United States of America. I know. A lot of people have lost jobs. Oh. A half a million manufacturing jobs. Here are jobs, 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 jobs. In the jobs. last four years. We're we losing. Total for the last four years. One of the reasons for that is that people think it's more attractive in some cases to go offshore than to, than to stay here. We have made it less attractive for enterprises to stay here than to go offshore from time to time. What I will do as president is make sure it's more attractive to come to America. Make sure more attractive. This is the way we're going to create jobs in this country. That's it. It's not by trickle-down government. More attractiveness. Not more, more money. money. More attractiveness. And hire more government workers. And now more more, more, oh, more, 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 more with more attractiveness. The government has never worked here, has never worked anywhere. I want to make America the most attractive That's what he wants, all right. Yes, sir. Oh, small business. he wants good stuff for us. 
to invest and grow in America. Ah. Now, we're going to have to make sure that as we train... He invests outside of America, but he wants others to invest in America. And China has them. One of the reasons, or one of the ways they don't play by the rules, is artificially holding down the value of their currency. Because if they put their currency down low, that means their prices on their goods are low. And that makes them advantageous in the marketplace. We lose sales. And we get more stuff US, for our money! Bad! China has been a currency <laughs> manipulator for years and years and years. And the president has a regular opportunity to, uh, to label them as a, as a currency manipulator, but refuses to do so. Oh. On day one. I will label China a currency manipulator. Ooh, boogeyman! Allow me as president to be able to put in place, if necessary, tariffs. Ah, and I like war, and they hit them back. Watch of our manufacturing. As if you could do so it alone. Make sure the people we trade with around the world play by like the rules. Like I say, man's in favor so of me, war, me, real and economic. There. Don't forget what's key to bringing back jobs here. It's not just finding someone else to punish. No, finding some paychecks. It's strict with people who we trade with to make sure they, they follow the laws. He'll find some jobs. But it's He'll also to jobs. make America a mo the most attractive place in the world for businesses of all kinds. That's why I want to bring on the tax rates. Oh, that's, that's what he wants. Place. That's why he wants it. it. So they it's want why he wants what he wants. The tax rate on companies is now 15%. Oh. Ours is 35%. So if you're starting a business, where would you rather start it? We have to be competitive if we're going to create more jobs here. Regulations have quadrupled. The rate of regulations quadrupled under this president. I talk to small businesses across the country. They say oh, we yeah. feel like we're under attack. All four of them. <laughs> I want to make sure that regulators see their job as encouraging small business, not crushing. Oh, that's what he wants to no see, all right. Yeah. Has been an extraordinary deterrent Encouraging enterprises of all kinds hiring people. My priority is making sure that we get more making people sure. hired. If yes. we get more, more people, people hired. hired. If we get back, back if we just hire them more, no paychecks, but we'll hire more people. Country, then you're if we can hire more people, people without any the paychecks, are down is because it's a work. It's so high. I know what it takes to get this to happen, and my plan will do that. And one part of it is to make sure that we keep China playing by the rules. <laughs> Two minutes here because we are then going to go to our last question. Oh, good. We need to create jobs here. Oh, we need to, and yes. Both Governor Romney and he I agree that we, we, we should lower our corporate tax rate. It's too high. Okay, lower it too high, yeah. But there's a difference in terms of how we would do it. I want to close loopholes that That's allow what he wants to do. To All right, expenses yeah. when they move to China that allow them to profit offshore and not have to get taxed so they have tax advantages offshore. All those changes in our tax code would make a difference. He now, wants. Rami actually wants to expand those tax breaks. One of his big ideas when it comes to corporate tax reform would be to say, if you invest overseas, you make profits overseas, you don't have to pay U.S. taxes. But of course, if you're a small business or a mom and pop business, or a big business starting up here, you've got to pay even the reduced rate the Governor Romney's talking about. And it's estimated that that will create 800,000 new jobs. Problem is, they'll be in China, or India, or Germany. That's not the way we're going to create jobs here. The way we're going to jobs, jobs here is Germany? not just to change our tax code, but also to double our exports. And we are on pace to double our exports. One of the commitments I made when I was president, that's creating tens of thousands of jobs all across the country. That's why we kept on pushing trade deals, but trade deals that make sure that American workers and American businesses are getting a good deal. Now, Governor Romney talked about China, as I already indicated. In the private sector, Go Governor ahead. Romney's company invested in what were called pioneers of outsourcing. That's not my phrase. That's what reporters call them. And as far as currency manipulation, the currency's actually gone up 11% since I've been president because we have pushed them hard. And we put unprecedented trade pressure on China. That's why exports have significantly increased under my presidency. That's going to help create jobs here. Mr. President, we have a really short time for... So we're sending up more stuff for the same money uh, instead iPad, of them. Uh, the Macs, the iPhones, <laughs> they're all manufactured in China. One of the major reasons is labor is so much cheaper here. How do you convince a great American company to bring that manufacturing back here? You can't. 
Unless the answer money. is very straightforward. Oh, he's got one. We can compete with anyone in the world as yes. long as the raw. playing field is level. Raw, raw, raw. China's been cheating over the years. Ah, that's why. One, by why. holding down the value of their currency. Number two, by stealing our intellectual property, our designs, our patents, our technology. There's even an Apple store in China that's a counterfeit Apple store selling counterfeit goods. The hack into our computers. We will have to have people play on a fair basis. That's number one. Number two, uh, we have to make America have to have the most fairness. attractive place for entrepreneurs, for people who want to expand the business. That's what brings jobs in. The president's characterization of my oh, tax plan is complete is completely is completely to, false. Let me tell you. Let me go to the president here because we really are running out of time. Yay. The question is, can we ever get we can't get wages like that. It can't be sustained. Here. Andy, there's some jobs that are not gonna come back. Because they're low wage, low skilled jobs. I want low wage, wage high skill jobs, jobs too. <laughs> That's why we have to emphasize manufacturing. That's why we have to invest in advanced manufacturing. Oh, well, we have to do, have to That's do, have to do. Make sure that we've got the best science. Have to make sure. Do. When we talk about deficits, if we're adding to our deficit for tax cuts for folks who don't need them, and we're cutting investment in research and science that will create the next app, create the next new innovation that will sell products around the world, we will lose that race. If we're not training engineers to make sure that they are equipped... He sure knows company, the problems if we don't. Then companies won't come here. Yeah, if we don't, don't do this, we don't do that, if we don't do that. Sure yeah. that we continue to lead this world economy, not just next year, but 10 years from now, 50 years from now, 100 Thanks. years from now. Lots of government, sure. government, 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 yes. government does not create jobs. Government does not create jobs. I want to introduce you to Barry Green because he's going to have the last question. Government does not create jobs. Good. King Henry I think this is a tough question. Kucinich played, uh, I could. Each of you, what do you believe is the biggest misperception that the American people have about you as a man and a candidate? Using specific examples, can you take this opportunity to debunk that misperception and set us straight? Uh, thank you. And that's an opportunity for me, and I appreciate it. Um, in the nature of a campaign, uh, it, it seems that some campaigns are focused on attacking a person rather than prescribing their own future and the things they'd like to do. In the course of that, I think the president's campaign is trying to like characterize to me as, yes. uh, as someone who is very different than who I am. I care about 100% of the American people. Oh, you care. I want 100% of the American people Everybody to the future. Everybody loves them all. I care about our kids. Oh, the children, of course. Love the children, yes. To make a bright and prosperous future for America. Oh, it doesn't. I, I spent my life in the private sector, not in yes. government. I, I'm a guy who wants to help with the experience I have. Yes, with American people. yes, yes, he wants my, to uh, help. My passion probably flows from the fact that I believe in God. Oh, what passion. And I believe we're all children of the same God. Yeah. I believe we have a The rich ones and the poor ones. ones, he's going to stick I, uh, to I served you. as a missionary for my church. Oh, God. I was a pastor in my congregation for about 10 years. Oh. I sat across the table from people who were, were out of work. Would you join that congregation? To find new work with him as a byproduct? Ooh. I went to the Olympics when they were in trouble to try and get them on track. And as governor of my state, I was able to get 100% of my people insured. All my kids, about 98% of the adults, was able also to... Got them all insured. Like so <laughs> have the right opportunity for a future. Didn't get them all cheap health care. Got them all insured. I can get this country on track again. We don't have to settle for what we're going through. We don't have to settle for gasoline at four bucks. Yes, we can. We don't no, have to settle uh, for unemployment. Ah, uh, uh, Obama last time. Yes, we, we can. And his is, we don't have to settle. We don't have to settle. Don't have to settle. Don't have to settle. Don't have to. Settle. Don't have to. Don't have we don't yes, you do. <laughs> yes, we can. No, you can't. We don't have to settle. Yes, you do. <laughs> I will get us on track to the president. The president hasn't. I will get us on track. I'll make sure we can reform Medicare and Social Security to preserve them for coming coming generations. The president said he would. He didn't. I'll get our incomes up. And by the way, oh, you'll I've get incomes things. up. I served as governor and showed I could get them done. Mr. President, last oh, how sad, eh? Hey, just make stuff up like that? Barry, I think a lot uh, of the campaign, maybe over the last four years, has been devoted to this notion that I think government creates jobs. Could. That that somehow is the answer. Could, yeah. I believe. King Henry did. I believe that the Lincoln did. system is the greatest engine of prosperity the world's ever known. No, it's not. I believe in 
self-reliance. Well, you see, your belief is wrong. And individual initiative. Well, that's true. And risk takers. Yeah, sure, helps. But I also believe that everybody should have a fair shot. Yeah, so why not get it? Everybody one? should do their fair share, and everybody oh, should yeah. play by the same rules. Justice, yes, because that's I believe how it our too. economy is grown. That's oh. how we built the world's greatest military. Justice grows an economy. No, uh, and, money does. And that is it's just part no of what's at stake in this election. There's a fundamentally different vision about how we move our country forward. No, you both ain't got any money. I believe Governor Romney is a good man. Ooh. Loves his family, cares about his faith. And ready to kill Arabs. But I also believe that when he said well, behind closed doors that 47% of the country consider themselves victims who refuse personal responsibility, think about who he was talking about. <laughs> the people Folks of victims. who worked all their lives, veterans who sacrificed for this country, uh, students who are out there trying to hopefully advance their own dreams, but also the Oh, yes, yeah, students. Soldiers who are overseas. Oh, uh, right worthy now. soldiers. People who are working hard every day. Hard working people. Paying payroll tax, gas taxes, but don't make enough. He must be trying yeah. to hurt them. And I want to fight for them. That's what he That's wants. That's what I've been doing for the last four years. Because oh, they fighting so hard and failing. I believe the country succeeds. He believes when my he grandfather fails. fought in World War II and he came back and he got a GI Bill and that allowed him to go to college. That wasn't a handout. That was something that advanced the entire country. Which I want to make sure is that? that the next generation has those same opportunities. That's why I'm asking for your vote, and that's why I'm asking for another four years. President Obama, Governor Romney, thank you for being here tonight. On that note, we have come to an end of this town hall debate. God, what an incredible... You must have gotten bored hearing me point out, ensure, make sure, ensure this, I believe, I believe... You heard it. They're the guys who you said they're going to ensure 50, 60, 80 times. Told you what they believed 50, 60, 80 times. Not once did they ever tell you where they're going to come up with new money for paychecks for jobs. So, jo here jobs, jobs, here jobs, jo looking all over for jobs, but not thinking to look for paychecks for the jobs. Anyway, that's kind of sad, and we'll see you at the next debate, the last debate, when I got to sit through with these boring people. Ah, a few yucks, but I mean, uh, boring to trying to come up with the same jokes about the same bad answers, you know? But what do you want? It's always, I believe, I believe in what we need, you know? And of course, we need everything good, right? Don't want everything bad, right? And that's what they want. Okay, see you next debate.